Here we are again, Andy, talking about Industrial Revolution 2.0. The last time we met, you gave us an overview of the RTX real-time platform with Ethercat, sort of gave us a, a technical overview of, of the platform. Today, I understand we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at the platform from a single point of view, its value in reducing, in reducing costs. Is that right? That's correct. We'll talk specifically just in how the platform addresses costs. Okay. So on that note, so this diagram will look familiar, but this is the same one from the previous video. So this is a standard industrial automation design. And really what we're finding is that there's three major obstacles that keep customers from reducing costs in a typical design. And the first one is proprietary hardware. So we'll get into this in a, in a couple more slides, but there's a lot going on here at the head of it all, the controller. So inside of this industrial PC, there's a lot of proprietary okay. hardware. And that leads to usually proprietary tooling. So that complex tooling is a big issue when you have all these different type of architectures in there. You tend to have these very complex tool sets that usually require a lot of expertise. And then finally, complex cabling. So this you can see just from this kind of simplified diagram, it's still pretty messy having communication buses as well as separate safety logic and wiring. So that adds to a lot of complexity and cost. I'm pretty sure you're going to tell me that the RTX platform simplifies this design quite Absolutely. A bit. So here is kind of, this is the before, here's the after shot. So this is the same system now implemented on the RTX real-time platform with Ethercat. So we're going to show in, in a minute like and talk in detail on how we're going to reduce the amount of proprietary hardware needed. We'll talk about how we can streamline and go from what was multiple to a single integrated development environment. And then finally how to really simplify the cabling as well as have built-in safety into the entire system. Okay, so that's uh, that's the end result. How do we get? How do we use the platform to do that? Good deal. So, uh, just as a quick review, we'll go over the main components of this real-time platform. So, at the foundation of it all, there's multi-core x86 hardware. So, uh, using this real-time platform, you're able to fully leverage Intel and AMD's multi-core roadmaps. So, you can use commercial off-the-shelf hardware instead of being tied to proprietary architectures such as DSPs and FPGAs. On top of that, too, is we have uh, Microsoft as well as RTX. So Microsoft delivers the full Windows experience, so powerful UI. But when you combine it with RTX, it transforms it into a real-time operating system. So this is how customers are not going to have a powerful interface, but actually going to have the real-time processing on that platform, fully leveraging this, this COTS hardware down below. And then on top of that is Ethercat. So Ethercat is real-time Ethernet. Not only do you have a high-performance communication bus for your control system, but it's also based on standard Cat5 Ethernet cabling and infrastructure. So it's, it's low cost as well as high performance. And then at the top of it all is customers like yourself will integrate here and put your intellectual property and applications at the highest level of the platform at the same time using a single integrated development environment, and that's Visual Studio. So again, we'll talk a little bit more, but this is the entire platform as in you can see the, the, the convergence of all these proven technologies, you know, Microsoft, RTX, Intel, AMD, Ethercat, is truly how this real-time platform comes together and what makes it so powerful. And delivering a full Windows user experience Absolutely. In, in real time. In real time with RTX. Okay. So let's look again, this is a review. So this is a, the same, you know, before photo of the industrial system. Again, proprietary hardware, complex IDE, complex cabling and safety. You know, those are the three issues. To get into more specifics, you know, here's the industrial PC. So if we were to crack this open in, on a traditional system, you'll find usually a lot of plug-in cards. Plug-in cards that not only handle communication buses, but also plug-in cards that are required for motion. They could be DSPs, FPGAs, microcontrollers. So a lot of proprietary hardware. And usually there's other processors in there to do the user interface. So you have multiple architectures all inside of one chassis. So that's really difficult to manage. And a lot of times the IPC is limited in the number of slots inside of it. So there's, there's a lot of constriction there and a lot of proprietary hardware that you're tied to. Because the proprietary architectures in there, a lot of times you, you're forced to use proprietary development environments. So you'll tend to find two, sometimes three different development environments just to actually develop on one system. So that's very difficult for, for a user. You sometimes have to have multiple development teams. You're going to have separate code bases. So a lot of integration complexity is there because of the 
this complex development environment. Okay. And so that's really what's affecting the, as far as the industrial PC is, again, proprietary hardware, which leads to a very complex tooling. If we take a step outside of the industrial PC, we get to the wiring. So even from this kind of simplified diagram, already you can see how complex it is to see all the separate safety wiring and logic in combination with the communication bus being separate. So there's a lot of proprietary stuff going on just in the wires alone. So not only is this costly to implement, it's also difficult to scale and it's hard to debug in, in a lot of cases. So, so the cabling aspects are very challenging with today's system. So let's go again and look at this system and the after effects. So when you implement the same system on the RTX real-time platform Neithacat, again, seeing the after photo, so we are actually able to reduce the amount of proprietary hardware. If you remember earlier, I talked about how the whole RTX platform is based on standard x86 multi-core. So now your industrial PC doesn't have multiple architectures inside of it. You have one standard uh, you know, commercial off-the-shelf motherboard with Intel and AMD multiprocessor cores. So that's how you're able to deliver from a hardware perspective. You're able to eliminate a lot of the plug-in cards that were required before. So you can shrink your IPC by as much as 50% real estate, sometimes as much as 25% in hardware costs alone to help deliver the real-time performance kind of leads into the integrated development environment because when you add you know windows for the world-class you know windows experience combined with rtx you have our, now a real-time operating system so rtx delivers now the real-time processing on top of that standard x86 multi-core in combination with the powerful ui with windows so because it's all kind of, fully leveraging the Windows experience, you're able to use a single integrated development environment, and that's Visual Studio. So you're using one tool set to develop both the user interface portion of Windows as well as the real-time portion on RTX and all under one tool set. So you have one, one code base, single tool set, and a unified development team. So that really maximizes your productivity. So a lot has transformed just in the industrial sure. PC itself. Now coming out to the cabling, you know, it's pretty drastic as far as just in this illustration here, but what's happened that's, that's really affected it is you have an integrated bus for both communication and safety. So EtherCAT delivers that. They, you no longer require a separate safety bus and sef separate safety logic. So it's all integrated into one CAT5 cable and your safety logic itself is built into the industrial PC itself as part of the application and going step down it's integrated down to the drives. So these drives are actually EtherCAT drives, safety drives. They actually have the hard logic inside of they're looking for the safety messages that could be coming you know, across the bus from your industrial PC, from your controller. So truly drastic savings and in, in streamlining of, the, of your wiring and also you know, having the capability, by the way, EtherCAT can reach a safety integrity level of SIL3, which is second highest. Okay, so there's big changes. One thing I'll, I'll also care to mention is the fact that if you're moving from an existing bus technology, EtherCAT also provides you the way to protect your investment because you can actually buy plug-in modules that support, you know, can open, device net, trophy sure. net, that all plug onto the, the same eBus or EtherCAT bus so you can truly leverage your existing hardware and software investment today while still taking advantage of EtherCAT. Okay. So a, a, lot of, a lot of costs driven driven out of the process on trusted proven technology absolutely so again leveraging a lot of well known you know established technologies but just the fact that they unconverge you really get a, a real synergy out of all the combination of these technologies so that's really it and then so coming up in the next video we're going to talk about how the RTX real time platform in specific helps you to enhance performance in an industrial system good we'll look forward to that one too thanks Thank again you, Andy Ryan.